I'm often asked what's it like to drive an electric car. And today we're go I'm going to be answering that question by going for a drive in my E208 here. Now, the thing about an electric car is that I'm going to press the brake to turn it on. I'm going to push the engine start stop. You're going to hear a few beeps, but aside from that, the car is actually on and ready to go. The really only way to distinguish whether it's on or not is because in the dashboard it will write ready. That means it's ready to go. Similar to an automatic car, you have drive, neutral, reverse, done from the shifter over here. Might vary according to the car. And I'm going to put it in drive mode. So we are ready to go. So I actually came into this change, you'd say, a bit experienced, right? So I've been driving an electric car daily now for around a year. And uh, however, electric cars in my family have really become the norm. So my uncle had gotten one 10 years ago when they were like a huge rarity. And ever since, I think every single member of my family who needed a car went for an electric car. And we now have 10 electric cars in my immediate family and a hybrid. And uh, I can assure you the conversation at the Christmas lunch has been how much range are you getting for a while now and I think it was because you had that honest family opinion and it wasn't the salesman and it wasn't the government and it wasn't environmentalist it was people you know and trusted and you see it you, you, you just see how cheaper this all is how better it feels how little things really do go wrong, right? Because there's less parts to go wrong. And we were convinced, one family member at a time. And I don't think anyone's going back. Let's talk range in an electric car. So range is measured by something called the WLTP standard. That's a worldwide something something test procedure, right? Every car goes through this test procedure and you get a kilometer or miles uh, rating for how far this car will go on one charge. Now that is a test. It is not a real world test in the sense that they have to do it in a lab um, such that every car that goes in is under the exact same conditions. However, it's the rating from all the ones that are out there. There's the NEDC rating as well, but the WLTP is the closest to real world results. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get the WLTP rating of your car, especially if you live in a cold country. Cold countries, or cold weather rather, affect the performance of the battery. Therefore, in a colder country, you can expect to get less range. However, if you are in a country like Malta, which has, say, an average temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, you can actually expect to get close if not meet, if not exceed WLTP. It also, of course, depends on your driving habits. If you're going to be flooring the accelerator pedal, you're going to eat up a lot more juice. Another neat feature about electric cars is that most of them come with an app. And from the app, you can um, essentially turn on the vehicle remotely and tell it basically to pre-cool your cabin. That's both heating and cooling, so the car turns on the air conditioning system and pre-cools the cabin. Quite handy in the Maltese summer, actually. So the car has a speaker on the outside which is activated at low speeds by law. And it's to warn pedestrians that frankly there is a vehicle there, because other than that, there's really no noise to inform pedestrians that a car is coming. However, you still have to be very careful. So Malta, I don't know why, but people tend to walk in the middle of the road, even though we have pavements. And it has occurred to me in this year that I've been driving this electric car that you'd be in one of these very small Maltese uh, town roads. You're literally behind the person who's decided to walk in the middle of the road and they just do not hear you. Um, so, you do have to be extra careful when, when, when driving an electric car for this, for this matter. So how often am I charging um, the car? 
I don't know why there's this perception that you charge an electric car every single day, right? This is not a cell phone. The battery is absolutely massive in comparison. Now, electric cars give around 300 kilometers on a single charge. Those are the modern ones. If you're driving the Maltese average of 10,000 kilometers per year, it means that you have to recharge your car once every week or probably, in my case, once every nine or ten days. So, on that ninth or tenth day, I'd plug in the car in the garage, um, quite conveniently, actually, and it will recharge over the night and it's ready to go for another week and a half. Of course, the question always comes up, do you have any regrets now that you've been driving an electric car for a year? None whatsoever. I honestly believe and I do not sell cars and I have no intention like uh, I'm not biased in any way I think this is a better vehicle than the internal combustion engine and the industry seems to believe that too because we are heading there whether we like it or not very few people and I speak to many um, through my Facebook group have gone electric and decided to go back rather they would all say the same thing I wish I'd done this sooner. The, the advantages are many, right? So I think the biggest reason people change is cost. The, the, it's so cheap to run an electric car, um, especially if you're someone like me who like really monitors his expenses. A little shameless plug here, my, you may download my free app that I made myself. It's called My Spending App. I'll put a link in the description actually. It's an app to manage and track your expenses and if you're an expense Nazi like I am you would know exactly what your fuel costs previously were, what you were paying on license, what you were paying on servicing and you'd realize that going electric even though it may mean paying a bit more upfront is actually highly highly beneficial in the long run. Interesting thing I think people don't realize about electric cars is the instant torque you get from the electric motor. So I'm going to put it into sports mode here, which is its strongest option. And instantly, without even changing my foot from the gas pedal, it gives you more power. And what's incredible here is that the second you press on the gas, the car literally flies. It's, it has to do with torque, right? Torque is the strength of an electric motor. It's also measured in internal combustion of motors. The difference is in an electric motor, we're able to get instant and maximum torque right away. Whereas in a traditional um, combustion engine vehicle, it takes a while to build up that power. Um, no gearbox, in fact. So the electric motor is spinning at, say, um, 12,000 to 20,000 RPM and uh, that goes into a speed reducer and the speed reducer drives the wheels directly. What that's gonna mean obviously in the long term is less maintenance, definitely nothing can go wrong with the gearbox because there is, isn't a gearbox. Now an interesting thing and that's different in a petrol car um, is something we call regenerative braking. So the car can, as soon as you let go of the gas pedal, will use the electric motor to slow down the vehicle. I'm going to demonstrate this now, hopefully you, can, you will see it happen. So I've let go, I'm not pressing the brake and the car starts to slow down. Now we're able to do this because the electro electromagnet in the electric motor when working in reverse generates current and rather than wasting all that energy to heat and friction which is what we usually did in a traditional car we're able to recharge the battery and from my experience you're able to recoup I'd say an average of at least 20% on most journeys through this method now the regeneration level can be controlled there is one which is generally always on in the case in my car here the Peugeot E208 you can activate the B mode, which I generally always activate as soon as I start the car. And that will allow you to slow down. So by activating the B mode, the braking mode, you're able to 
take the maximum strength of that regeneration. Now we have seen on this channel and some other review videos that you can control the region in some electric cars from paddle shifters behind the steering wheel, which I think is pretty cool. And therefore you can adjust how much the car decelerates as soon as you let go of the gas pedal. However, what tends to happen, and it's a great feature, is you end up nearly able to drive this car using one pedal. So as you approach a roundabout, I haven't applied the brakes. I'm just checking what's going on. And the brake and the, the brakes are essentially working for me. So we're going down a hill now. The perfect place to charge your vehicle. So as we're going down, I'm very lightly applying the gas, nearly not applying it at all actually. And we are fully charging the battery. The dashboard shows you when you're using power, when you're using a bit of power or when you're fully charging. Going down a hill is the perfect opportunity to charge the battery. I hope this little first-hand experience has sort of convinced you to go electric. It is really a much easier ride to drive, a much easier ride to maintain, a much cheaper ride and the advantages go on and on frankly. So I hope I've convinced you that the future is electric. <laughs>